Remember before we get started on this next page that right here in the bin is the Unit 5 Justifications Reference Sheet. So if you need to take that out or print that out and have that handy, go ahead. Looking at this first one, it's asking us here if they give us that this little tiny piece of the arc is 113 degrees, they're asking for the measure of major arc ACB, the rest of it. And we know that the whole circle equals 360. That would be our justification. So since we know that the whole circle equals 360, we can just subtract the 113 from 360 to solve. And I'm getting that the measure of major arc ACB is equal to 247 degrees. Next, they're asking for minor arc AD, this little piece right here. And we can see that this right here is a diameter. And so if that angle is a 180 degree angle, couldn't we also say that this arc is a 180 degree arc measure? So if that's 180 degree, arc, and this is a 132 degree arc, we can then subtract those from 360. So what justifications have I, am I using here? I'm going to be using semicircle equals 180. And I'm going to be using the fact that the whole circle equals 360. Those are my two justifications. Now I'm able to do 360 minus 180 minus 132 to find my answer. And that's going to give me that the measure of AD is equal. Go ahead and grab your calculators. 360 minus 180 minus 132. Did you get 48 degrees? Good job. Okay, on this next one, they want to know the measure of arc AB. And it's minor arc. It's just this little piece right here. We know that the minor arc, that this arc measure, is equal to the central angle. So if this is 136, then this is 136. So we're just going to say that the measure of minor arc AB is equal to 136 degrees. And the justification we're going to write for that is that central angle equals arc measure. Okay, where am I getting all these justifications from? Huh, Ms. Sanchez? If you look at this justification sheet right here, central angle equals arc measure, that's one of the justifications I'm using. Circle equals 360. Semicircle equals 180. That's where I'm getting these from. That's why it's good to print that out and have that handy. Okay, next one is asking for the measure of angle AOB. And we know that the measure of the angle is going to be equal to the arc measure, so let's go get that arc measure. So if we know that this one is 152, and we know that the whole circle equals 360, then we can do 360 minus 152. And we get 208 degrees. Since the measure of arc AXB is equal to 208, we can also say that the measure of angle AOB is equal to 208 degrees. And the reason is that central angle equals arc measure. OK, next one's asking me for the measure of angle ABC. This one's using inscribed angle theorem.
an inscribed angle theorem says that the measure of this inscribed angle is equal to half. So the measure of angle ABC is equal to half the measure of its intercepted arc, arc AC. This got kind of covered up when I did that. So if I know that the, if the measure of the arc AC is actually 79, then I can just use on my calculator half of 79, and that's going to get us that angle, 39.5 degrees. So the measure of angle ABC is equal to 39.5 degrees. Because of the inscribed angle theorem, we know that the measure of ABC is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. Okay, measure of BDC is the same thing, inscribed angle theorem, where to get this, arc, we know that the measure of BDC is equal to two times that angle. So this is like the opposite of the inscribed angle theorem or the converse, where I know that this angle is half the arc and therefore the arc is double the angle. So here we're going to say 2 times the 93, and that comes out to 186 degrees. So remember that if we are starting inside and going out, we're going to double it. If we're starting outside and we're going in, we're going to half it. What am I going to write as my reason for this one? Inscribed angle theorem. Okay, on this next one, we've got this piece is 98. We've got this piece as 115, so I could find this other missing piece of the arc, right? Because we know that the whole circle equals 360. So three sixty minus the one fifteen is two forty five. 245 minus the 98 is 147. So this outside missing piece right here is 147. Now that we have that outside piece, now I can go get the measure of this angle because we know that the measure of that angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So measure of angle LKM is half of the measure of intercepted arc LM, or half of 147. And so here I go grabbing my calculator. Okay, I'm getting 73.5 degrees. And then what do we put for our reasons for this? We did put whole circle equals 360, and we also used inscribed angle theorem. Okay, looking at this next one, we've got this angle that's given to us as 30. Because I know that the angle is 30, I know that the intercepted arc is double that, 60. But they're asking me for this angle over here, DBC, but it has the same intercepted arc of 60. So I know that the angle is half that, and it would work out to where it's also equal. So what two concepts have I used here? I got that the measure of arc DC was equal to two times that angle DAC. So it was 2 times 30, which is 60. And then I went to go get the intercepted arc <clears throat> of 60. So I went measure of angle DBC is equal to half the measure of that intercepted arc DC, or half of 60, which is 30. So it's like I had to go in to out to get the 60, then I went from the 60 back in to 30 again. 
And so essentially, when we start to recognize this problem over and over again, we're like, oh, hey, it's the one where the two angles are the same because they have the same intercepted arc. So what two concepts did I use here from going from the angle to the arc? That's the inscribed angle theorem. And going from the arc back into the angle, that's also the inscribed angle theorem. So we're going to write inscribed angle theorem as our reason. Okay, these ones down here have to do with the fact that this is a diameter. And since this is a diameter, this is a semicircle, or we could say that this arc is 180. Since this is 180, <coughs> and we know that the angle of an intercepted arc that's 180 is gonna be 90, and the same thing over here on this right-hand side, we know that this is gonna be 90. We're really just dealing with two right triangles here, two triangles that have a 90 degree angle. So this is, I'm gonna go back to this little cheat sheet here to show you. Inscribed angle of a semicircle equals 90. Do you see the second one? That's the reason we write. It is an inscribed angle, but it's an inscribed angle of a semicircle which makes us recognize that it's 90. And so we're going to write that for both. Okay. So since we know that that's a 90 in there, and they're asking me for this length IH, well, I know all kinds of things about right triangles. Specifically in this case, I know the Pythagorean. When I have a right triangle, I know that the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. You might know it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 4 squared plus 8 squared is going to give me the IH squared or 16 plus 64, which is 70, 80. So we need to take the square root of 80 and I could simplify the 80 into 16 times 5 or 4 times 4 times 5, the square root of 16. I could simplify this into 4 root 5 as a simplified radical, or just take the square root on a calculator and get 8.94. So this would be my approximate answer. This would be my exact answer. So either way, IH is approximately 8.94 or 4 root 5. And see the little feet mark up there? So we can put the little feet mark. On this next one, notice they gave us the hypotenuse in one leg, and we are just missing QRP. So it wants this over here, QRP. So when I have two side lengths and I'm missing an angle, this is actually a way to go you would use something called inverse trig to find a missing angle. And because we did COVID school this year, we only learned regular trig, not inverse trig. So as an FYI, um, notice that this is using an opposite and I hypotenuse. So it would be the sine of X is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And you would be taking the inverse sine of both sides of the equation, sine negative one, sine negative one of both sides. And you're going to notice on your calculator that there's actually a button that says sine negative one, two divided by root 15. And so if you're feeling crazy, go ahead and push that button and try it out.
and it was 2 divided by 15. Oops, what happened there? And so the answer is 7.66. So the degrees of that angle is 7.66. Now, how did I expect you to know this? You wouldn't have been able to figure this out because we did not learn inverse trig. So I'm just showing you that there is this idea of a missing angle using trig to find it, but we didn't have time to learn inverse trig this year. Don't worry, you'll get to it in math three or future maths, okay? So I'm gonna leave this video as is for this page two, and I'll start a new video for page three.